My full name is uh, Tashiana Imiroslini, and uh, uh, I'm now doing, uh, you know, working in a production company. I do all the fashion shows and everything. And uh, my name is uh, actually my name is very long, but people just call me Amy for short because I have that name for a long time, since I was eight years old. Ah, so, uh, when I was uh, eight to nine years old. I was uh, looking at a lot of magazines and everything, so I was so interested in uh, uh, looking at all these beautiful girls with all these nicely dressed up models and everything. So that was a time when it makes me so uh, uh, passionate towards uh, this kind of things, which uh, which I always told myself that one day I want to become a model myself. So um, when years goes by, when I was um, uh, 9 to 10, I also met another friend of mine, she's my neighbor, she's also just like me. So we clicked together and we went out and then we, we go along towards uh, our daily life and routine and slowly we got to know about uh, the medications like hormones and stuff like that. Now that was 31 years ago, everything is just you can buy off the shelf, it's much more easier. Unlike now, we have to do on prescription, so it's totally different. My parent doesn't know about me taking all these hormones and everything. I mean, of course, you just pop up pills or nothing else in your bag after you pop out the pills, right? So, um, I just take, but it just develops uh, like small breasts and uh, still cannot, uh, nobody knows except for, I mean, you get so excited having a breast at that time. But um, slowly I start to wear makeup. And then I start to put on earrings and stuff like that. And then that's where my father found out about uh, about me. So he's, he's not very happy with it. There's a lot of rejections with it. So uh, in Singapore, of course, the, the religious uh, council here says that uh, we are not allowed to. It's what stated in the book also in the Quran says that we're not allowed to. Whatever. But to me. We are living in the modern days, you know. I mean, we still can can perform what we're supposed to do in our religious uh, thing. But this is totally between me and God. This is up to Him to accept what is my good point when I do all the things. And of course, I mean, people break every rules, right? I mean, you still have to do what you want to do because I'm living in this era now. I need to change your identity. I need to work, I need people to accept me, I need to travel around with this identity. So I need a lot of things. So if I have to change, I change. But in other countries, like Iran or something, they're acceptable. They, they accept to have all these kind of things because they go against the homosexual. But they say, you can be a woman, but not be a gay. So I don't know, it's totally different kind of a religious view between the Middle East and, and, and Asia. So to me, that's what I think. When my mom passed away when I was young, so she totally doesn't know about this. And then uh, my father, after, so I left home when I was uh, 17, 16 something, uh, 16 years old, seven. so I left home. And uh, uh, I've been independently by myself. And then uh, I found a job, it's a uh, cabaret. Uh, before Boom Boom, which you call the Wax Dog. So, we are the first group in Singapore to perform these uh, impersonation shows and uh, drag shows or whatever. They call it drag show, but all of us are all the transsexuals doing the show. And um, so we went there. Uh, so, and then I, I live with myself. That's my earning money and everything. So I save up and that's how I, 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 I managed to do a lot of things. At the age of 17, I already have a breast implant. And my father doesn't know that as well. So my sister came around to look for me. I have three sisters, so they come and look for me. So they say, no, I should go home. I mean, they see me of what I am. I've been transformed and they have nothing much to say. I mean, they say, if you want to be like this, of course, you can 
carry on but just be a, a good person you know don't do a lot of uh, other things so I accept her because she's been very supportive to me so and then um, we went back I go and see my dad so my dad said oh my dad still not no I mean having seen your your previous son being something else of course it's quite a shock to him but after two or three times of uh, visiting him and then he start to accept uh, of being what I am but he said you're not going to do anything until you're 21 years of age so I kept that uh, that words from him so people are giving me all this um, uh, advice is that I should do it that means I was quite uh, feminine more small petite look you know ah, and then everybody say you should go for a sex change or that kind of thing so I did it when I was 21 so after 21 after I did my I think 22 yeah I did my sex change I went back to the CMPB office I threw them my female identity cards I show them my passport and I tell them you know um, what else you want to do on me and they say they can't do anything anymore as promised they give me my exemption paper and uh, that's and then uh, that's my life was uh, my life start to go further more than that back then there's a big issue darling in the government of Singapore you know they don't allow they say oh, why why all these people should you know should be working when when they are wearing that, that kind of clothes and everything but Anyway, those jobs that I did before with are those people who are really supporting. They like these people like me to work, to be to work like we are like a normal people. So um, we have this professor, professor called Professor Ratnam. Professor Ratnam, you know who? And then we have uh, Lee Kuan Yew and all those people. And then they have discussed this issue. We voice out, we say why we can't work, why can't we do this, why can't, what are we going to do here, you know. So, um, so after that, uh, he voiced out to the Prime Minister, he said that these people are eligible to be like other normal people, they should go to work and they, have, uh, they should have a female identity after they change and they should live a, a normal life. In the past, okay, in the past, um, <laughs> quite funny, uh, when we went to interview and then all these people, they start staring at us or they just don't understand, you know, they don't know this word called transsexual, transgender, homosexual, bisexual. Um, so we have to tell them, we make them understand that we are nice people, you know, they can treat us, um, the same as they treat others of their friends. Of course, you can you can do a lot of things. I mean, uh, for me, I'm I'm a performer and doing production work and all those do uh, do in the fashion line, do in all the entertainment line and everything. But some others, they work like in the office as clerk, as uh, as a beautician, as a lot of things. I mean, they can also. I mean, now I see a lot of them have been working in, in various uh, uh, company and everything. They are acceptable. They are still haven't changed yet, you know, in boutiques or whatever. And they still haven't changed and that they're still uh, allowed to work. Because these people, or the Singaporean now, has made understand that we are uh, also one of them, you know. So there's um, a progress. Yeah, there is a lot of progress towards uh, then. This is also the same issue like um, what I said before. The, 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 the reason why we come out on the newspaper and press is because we have names calling on us, you know. Like um, the Chinese will call us Aqua, the Malay will call us Bapo, and then the Angmo will call us Billy Boy, you know, during those times in Boogie Street or that kind of thing. But um, so we just have to tell them that. Uh, that's why I say again that uh, we have to make them understand that uh, that we are the same people like them. But now, now there's not much of a calling. But now they're trying. I don't know whether they're trying to be disgusting or rude or what. But they they give you a phrase. They call you kaka, for instance, in Malay. Eh? They call it kaka is uh, sister, right? So to me, I don't know whether they are. 
they are trying to be um, they're going to respect me or are they going to uh, are they insulting me or anything but it all depends on, on their expression itself uh, some of them are really um, meant what they say you know but I don't have such a feeling and I can't be bothered with them because I don't know whether they know or they don't know, so I can't be bothered. You know, some of them don't even know. Okay. Now it's better because now we have internet access and then uh, everybody's, everybody has all the questions in the mind all been answered, you know, in a minute of seconds. And um, it's much more easier. And, and uh, uh, I always advise to all the younger generation of mine, telling them that better uh, dress well you know wear something nice appropriate when you walk outside so meet someone unless you have to go on the street in the middle of the night that is totally that's your job so I'm mean, still giving them advice still I'm giving them advice that uh, they should uh, wear something nice you know approach people nicely talk to them nicely don't get yourself into problem. If you get yourself into problem, there's no one else to blame. Right? You should blame it on yourself. I went to Tantric, I see a lot, a lot of uh, new faces, all the younger ones, and then I go to play, I see so many younger ones, they're all coming out from uh, uh, poly or college or whatever. There's too many, I think there's too many. The older one is okay, they know how to behave themselves. The younger one, I tell you, oh my god, not only people like me fight, they also fight, you know, I don't know they fight over what, they fight because you bang me, I bang you, you know, that kind of kiddie thing, but I think it's, uh, if they want to grow up, if they want to have a lot more, I think they should have also create more space for them, if they don't have all this space, they are you know, it's like a bot. It's like a jar when you put in honey inside. When you put it over too much, it will overflow. When it's overflow, then you get a problem. You need to clean it up. By the time you clean up, you get a problem because the ants will come because it's too sweet. So the point is that they have all these people like taboo and all the other big places. They uh, they have not have made a association for themselves you know because all these gay people in Singapore they all go by their own way you know like us we if there's any problem we'll call them out what's the problem down there what happened you know? don't create all this kind of thing you are making all embarrassment to all the public people but unlike gay when they have a problem they don't call each other you know you want to go and die go and die lah so that is the problem. They should have your own um, community people to gather information what is best or not because Singapore is so small. You can't go anywhere. There's good and bad. The bad one, if they're going to keep fighting and fighting and fighting, the government is going to get fed up and they are not going to get a female identity anymore. The good part, if they just carry on their life as normal, then they will age gracefully, you know. And as for the gay community or LGTB community, um, if they have, they cannot overexpose too much. If they overexpose too much, they're gonna get problem because majority of our community here are Chinese, and majority of the Chinese uh, uh, of this LGTB are homosexuals as well. And they are also a uh, closet, you know, some of them, some of the family doesn't know, majority, a lot of them. So, if they are over too much exposing themselves, um, something is going to happen in the future. But I really don't know what, but I think, you know, everybody should just cool down a little bit.